Mary and James, September the 10th, 2020, you're getting married today. And in this very same day in 1949, your grandparents got married in Scotland. And they lived a very happy 67 years together. It was a wonderful marriage, and I'm sure yours will be too. We wish we were going to be with you, but unfortunately we can't. It's a COVID wedding. Many others have had the same thing this year. But we're with you in spirit, and we want to send you all our love. And we're going to just make a few comments. No advice, just a few comments for you both. Hilary, you're a little princess who was, unfortunately for mum, a quintessential tomboy since I was never able to take you shopping in the girls' department for frilly pink dresses. Um, and I, I really, I know you just wanted to be like your brother. But also, you just preferred the company of boys when you were young. When you were in lower school at Rutgers Prep, you only had boyfriends. I mean, boys who were friends. And we had a birthday party for you, several in fact, where we had Hilary, about 10 boys, and maybe Amanda, who was a neighbor, was allowed to come too. Anyway, you had a very happy time there. And then you moved to Bernersville to school there. And it was a big culture shock for you because at that school, all the boys sat at one table and all the girls sat at another table. However, there you met some very good friends who have remain, remained friends to this day. Magda, Rachel, Jenny, Beth, Noel, and Ali. And you've taken different paths in your lives, but you remain committed to your friendships. Getting back to tomboy days, though, I remember very clearly how upset you were one Christmas morning when Father Christmas had given you a Barbie doll. And you were furious, and you have never forgiven him. You really wanted a He-Man figure or a G.I. Joe, I can't remember. And now let's move on to a couple of your special loves. That is, of course, before Timmy and before James. Teddy came into your life early on when your favorite uh, blankie, that, scr that scrap of old cloth that you, uh, that you had, flew out of the car window one day on a major highway and couldn't be rescued. Gran and Grumps had given you a steef bear as a baby and uh, you sort of ignored it till then, but you suddenly became almost inseparable. He is, as we all know, still a very important part of your life as James can attest. Through, through intense affection, I might add, um, he's now had uh, both ears amputated as well as both arms, but he still apparently, according to you, smells wonderful. James may disagree. You may remember how angry you were at me when I, uh, in my, with my um, OCD tendencies, I removed the Steef label from his ear without asking you first, and you were furious. Another very special item um, from your youth, uh, not youth, my goodness, early, earlier than that, but it was your Yankees baseball cap. We were at a game, at a Yankees game, on a hot summer's day when you were about three years old, and so the cap was purchased for protection. Little did we know then that it would be worn every day, and I mean every day, almost all day for the next several years. We glued it, we stapled it, we washed it, just to keep it going. And now it's in the memory box for you in our attic. You tried various careers in early years. You were a ballet dancer. There we go, a little ballet dancer. You were a junior chef. Loved those brownies. <laughs> and maybe even a vampire. A very pretty vampire. However, none of these careers stuck and you took a different path and that led you to James. James, one of the first things Hillary told us about with you was how you had noticed her at a Tough Mudder event and she was sitting untwizzling a Twizzler, with, so separating the sticks and eating them on their own. We're not quite sure exactly the significance of this, but it's a very endearing memory. It's obvious from the first time that we met you that you loved and respected Hillary we knew immediately that you were a keeper. You were quite quiet when you first met us, but you've since lost any concern about repeatedly beating us at card games anywhere and any time, and we love it. You've also started to visit the golf range with Hillary. This tells us that you want to be involved in every part of her life and to continue to encourage and support her. And you may even, after all this time, have forgiven us for occasionally watching Fox News. You're both lefties and very creative with a love of fitness and outdoors, and Timmy, of course. 
James, you weren't at all sure about Timmy when you first met him at our house in South Carolina, and we think maybe the feeling was mutual. I think the feeling was definitely <laughs> mutual. However, you opened your heart to him, and he's now become an integral part of your family. He lives an incredibly charmed life with the two of you. There aren't many dogs that have their own backpack to go on long hikes and bicycle rides with their owner. He really is a lucky boy. He also, I believe, has a choice of about four beds. Is that right? Several beds, yes. and I think he has his own hamburgers made for him too. Stephen the White Bear is another character who features prominently in your lives. There are two, Steve, there are two Stevie Christmas ornaments that Hillary uh, created for us. There they are. <laughs> and, of course, we can't forget Willie Rabbit. But, unfortunately, uh, we don't have any photo of Willie uh, to show for this show and tell. Um, I always loved her, as you've probably learnt, James, occasionally she'll come up with a little surprise for you. Um, and I always used to love Father's Day. Uh, every, every Father's Day, um, she'd come up with a little uh, thing she'd made. Um, I remember the, uh, the cage upstairs with the parrot in it, or the, or the oh, yes, canary, yes. remember? Uh, there was also this master's box here, a uh, cigar box, um, cigar inside. Um, as well as, I think, yes, a magazine here, uh, Golf Monthly, with my name in it, especially made by Hillary. Also, another Father's Day was the mailbox with a basket of flowers made by Hillary. And in the mailbox, there was an envelope addressed to Mr. Dad, with very kindly inside, very thoughtful of her, she had, writ she had written out a cheque, let me see, a cheque addressed, made out to me, where are we, for $100,000. Very kind of you, Hills. But even more importantly, you gave me, my goodness, where's it gone? I mustn't lose it. You gave to Dad worth one chore. <laughs> I might be calling that in one day soon. I know that Hillary still loves to create wonderful surprises for you too, James, and you do also for Hillary. We're not going to give you any marriage advice. We just encourage you to continue in the way you've already started, loving and nurturing each other daily. We're very grateful, actually, for Tough Mudder for bringing you together and for also giving the opportunity to meet your very special friends. We're so happy that you're all together to, to celebrate the special day and the beginning or continuation, I should say, of a wonderful life and adventure together. Congratulations. We love you. Love you both. James, Bammer, Jim's Kebab, Jimmer, you, sir, have always taken us on adventures. It started with the swim team and then the triathlons and then the bike and build. Oh, the, the Obama years, my goodness. Um, and uh, Tough Mudder and drone racing. <laughs> um, you continue to take us on adventures. Hillary, Hill, Ray Ray, mother of Timmy. We fell in love with you, the Manhattan girl, as you stood in our living room wearing your flannel shirt and jeans. <sighs> Queen of Cozy, we've grown to love your smile, your very warm heart, and your wry humor. You've illustrated our lives, our pups, Owie and Rory, and little darling bear, Stefan. You gave us our grandson, Timmy. You joined us in our new home and helped find the perfect places for all of our loved treasures. You loved James. Well, um, advice. There are two times I find in your life when people will find out what you're doing and tell you exactly how it's going to go because they have done it, they've been there, they know. And that's all bullshit. <laughs> Jen, edit that out. But here's our, our BS for you. 
we have been married for 35 years. So we know nothing about what you're about to go through. <laughs> we started off with a very basic but important prenuptial agreement, which was if either of us felt like they just had to leave the relationship and ask for a divorce, they were also obligated to take the children with them. I had something different for our list. Uh, we grew up in a time when uh, spouses very typically bashed each other when talking to someone of their own sex. So the husbands get together and bash the wives, and the wives get together and complain about the husbands. And we made a vow not to do that, not to bash each other. And uh, that is something that has served us well. Oh, over the years, you're going to grow, you're going to change. But that also gives you the opportunity to rediscover the person that you're married to over and over again and fully appreciate them and who they are becoming. The last thing that we wanted to share about our life is that we placed respect and trust with each other before anyone else. So as an illustration of this, I'd like to share that when we were a young couple, we left notes for each other every day. A note in the morning, a note at night, a, night, a note hidden here and there. And we ended nearly every note with the same words. Love you, love you, place no one else above you. And we're so thankful that uh, so many that friends are there and able to celebrate an occasion which to us is so huge and important. Um, we appreciate it and... We, we really, really wish we could be there. Oh yeah. And we're, we just want to apologize in advance to all your friends uh, for the workout. Well, that James will require of all of you. You know what's coming. This, Hillary and James, is what we think your story is. We think that your story is about caring. The way that you two care for and treat each other uh, spills out into everyone and everything around you. It changes the tone, it changes our hearts. And that is something that we cherish and we think that there's really not a better thing to base marriage on. Um, Hillary, I know I've told you this when, when I visited you guys for the first time in Brooklyn and would be there while you're going through your morning routine. Just the sound of the way you two work together, the way you speak to each other, it was a beautiful, harmonious sound. And I love hearing it. And I love it every time I'm around the two of you. Creating a home is something the two of you have always done. Wherever you go. Everywhere, be it in Brooklyn or Denver, Seattle, or uh, Michigan, Scotland, Me Mexico, Me right, the grocery store, anywhere, anywhere you, you go, go. Yeah. you create that sense of home about you and make everyone feel at home. As you two move into the future, you are going to take that sense of home with you wherever you go. And that love and happiness are going to find you. They're going to follow you into that home. We would just like to acknowledge that this union is something Timmy. Timmy. Timmy's been waiting for for a long time. He has been wanting this for the longest time. We're just time. thinking of Timmy. The rest of us, hmm. you know. We're not important. But James, this is a Bell's official. It's a wonderful beer, suitable for the occasion. Here's to the happiest occasion I can imagine and drinking in the morning. To James and Hillary, we love you. For those of you that don't know me, I'm Magda. I'm Claire. Hi, I'm Rob. I'm Daniel. I'm Bob.
Bobby. I'm Jen. My name is Eli. I'm Courtney. Went to high school with Hilly. One of Hilly's college roommates. I am James's brother. And I had the distinct pleasure of being the roommate of both James and Hilary in a 500 square foot Brooklyn basement. Like many of our friends, I met Hillary and James at Tough Mudder. I worked with James and Hill at Tough Mudder. We know James and Hillary uh, from Tough Mudder. What I love most about Hillary is... Oh my God, there's so many reasons. Just about everything. I love Hillary because she's an amazing artist. She always sends me the cutest homemade Christmas ornaments in the world. Hillary's just a great friend. She taught me the value of exercise. She would design an entire like circuit for me to do and I hated her for every single second we did it until we were done and then I loved her. If I need a little downtime, I always feel better after I hang out with Hillary. Oh my God, she makes the best spaghetti carbonara. That shit was great. There's a lot of um, talking to and for animals. She allowed me to experience um, caring for Timmy Tutu in New York City. Live animals, stuffed animals. He would eat all the dental floss out of our bathroom and he would then have terrible, terrible poops. We have serious conversations too and I really like those. I never think people are smarter than me, but Hillary, Hillary Fordyce May, you are smarter than me. Hillary just makes me laugh always. There's no like, oh, we got to catch up. What's new with you? Even if we don't talk for, I don't know, months and months and months, I can always pick back up. We can talk, not talk. Sometimes she's wearing her retainers. Sometimes I'm wearing my retainers. I am so fortunate to have known her uh, for the last 20 years. Like I said before, I just always feel better after I hang out with Hillary. She's like the best. What I love about James, his mother, his ability to fall asleep anywhere, and his aversion to cleanliness. <laughs> I'm such a dick. One thing that I really love about James is that he takes time to listen to you, and you can tell that he's thinking about things from your point of view. The things that I truly do appreciate about James are his willingness to be himself. You can count on him as an honest mirror. Whether we're drinking black and tans and talking deep thoughts at Smith's, He's very good at empathizing. Whether we're at an event site, whether we're doing a workout, no matter where James is at, he's always completely comfortable being himself. We get along pretty well for the most part, but we would also, you know, often uh, fight and things like things like that, like brothers do. I'd get very angry because he was much better at using logic and reasoning than I was. No matter the situation, he's always able to put a positive spin on it, which is a fantastic offset to my basic personality. Usually it would end when he would point out what I was thinking that was incorrect and then I would punch him. Thankfully we've grown out of that. His desire is always to do things for the right reason. I've always loved seeing how tenacious James is when he has a goal in mind. Not just to make a ton of money, not just to be some cool person. Even when we were in high school, he just decided that he wanted to join the swim team. I would join in for the team dinners and I saw how close he and his and his friends were in there. And I thought it was just a really cool experience and I felt like I needed to join. So James took it on himself to help me learn how to swim that summer and how to breathe while you're swimming, which turns out is pretty important. It was really neat to be able to share that experience together. He wants to do it for the right reasons because a, it makes people better or makes the world better. As goofy and idealistic as that sounds, I truly appreciate that about him. You know that when you're somewhere around him, uh, you're going to be comfortable. You're going to be taken care of. You've got somebody who can listen to you no matter what's going on. No matter what he's doing, his heart is in the right place when he's doing it. When I think of James and Hillary, the word that comes to my mind is balance. To me, James and Hill are absolutely perfect together. James is this social creature that loves getting us together for a big group outing. James is a big hugger, loves, loves hugging in all forms. Hillary would have been the bride that Irish exited her own wedding. And Hillary loves receiving hugs. Probably gonna happen later. It often feels like they're really the same person. They're both teachers. They're both massive nerds at heart from their shared interest in outdoor activities, hiking, biking, 
beers in the sun sometimes all at the same time. James taught me that in American Sign Language, this means jellyfish, and this means something very different. Hillary taught me her signature dance move. They like studying, they love, they love the same things, and they're all super nerdy. I remember James used to bring this big Tupperware of raw kale and carrots with no dressing for lunch at work. Absolute bottomless pits of stomach. Like they can just eat volumes of snacks that are immeasurable. Recently, Hillary asked me why they bother to put serving sizes on pints of ice cream because they are clearly meant for one sitting. They're a bit fanatical about working out and they love doing it together. They need for some kind of daily exercise and uh, good luck to anyone that gets in their way. Kudos. It's probably keeping the snack bodies at bay. Speaking of snack bodies. They're enduring love and care uh, for their little fur baby Timmy and making sure he gets the right amount of both food and cuddles every single day. They love that creature more than anything in the universe. When it comes down to it, they are two of the most thoughtful and caring people that I know. They look to make a difference through their actions uh, in every single thing that they do, regardless of how large or small the task. And it's obvious that when you are with them, there is a love and connection between them. They make a great team. James and Hill already are life partners, uh, sharing and joys together. And that brings a big smile to my face. Overall, they are just the most loyal and caring and thoughtful friends. And that's what they are at their core. Like they are each other's best friends. <laughs> and ultimately, the desire to cap off each and every day with a nice nip of tequila and a prompt 8 p.m. bedtime. And as happy as I am to have met them at Tough Mudder, I am so happy that they were able to meet each other. We love you. Um, we can't wait to visit you soon. I wish I could be there. I love you so much. Congrats. Best of luck to both of you. Congrats, James and Hillary. Love you guys both. And I'm really looking forward to seeing you as soon as we get to. I wish you all the love and happiness in the world. And now I can say that if your marriage is anything like that of your parents, you have a very long, happy road ahead of you.